How would you like to use YouTube ads to target your ideal prospects or customers as they're searching for things on Google and YouTube? This is video number five of our six part mini series on the six YouTube ads that every business owner can create. And in this video, we're gonna talk about custom intent audiences and how you can create ads that reach people as they're searching for things on Google and YouTube. This is video number five in a six part YouTube mini series that's gonna show you the six videos that every business owner can create using YouTube ads. Down in the description, I have the previous four videos that you can check out, watch them in order. It's gonna help you build your brand, build your business, and build your bottom line with YouTube ads. And in this video, we're talking about number five, custom intent audiences, using YouTube ads to get in front of people as they're searching for the products and services that you offer on Google and YouTube. Stay tuned. Now, when you're looking for a product or service, or you're looking for something to buy, or you're looking to research, where is it that you turn? Well, if you're like most people, you're going to google.com or you're going to YouTube, which is the second largest search engine, and you're typing in questions like, how can I, does it, should I, will it, can it, does it, all those questions you're asking the platform and you're wanting to evaluate, you're wanting to learn, you're in a different type of research mentality. And with YouTube ads, you can use your ad, your message to present your offer in front of people who are searching for those things. So imagine this, you take all the search terms that you can think of as it pertains to your business and, and what your audience is searching for, your perfect customer. You throw them in a big giant bag and Google says, okay, we have an audience here. We have a, a large number of people that are searching for these items at any given time on Google or YouTube. We can present your ad in front of them. And this is great. This shows incredible high levels of intent. And that's why it's called a custom intent audience because Google already has what are called in-market audiences. And these are templated audiences. In fact, if you go down to the description to video number two, we talk about in-market audiences and how they're easy to use and Google lays out the template for you. But when you're in something that's maybe a little bit more niche or a little bit more obscure, or you need something that's very defined, then custom intent audiences are a great solution for you. And we're going to talk about the pros, we're going to talk about their cons, but you're able to get in front of them based on search intent. It's making a custom audience out of the intent of your users. And they do this with keywords, with search terms, questions that people are asking the platform. Now, like I mentioned, there are some pluses, there are some minuses and things that you should be careful. So I actually wanna go over to my computer and I wanna show you how you can create a custom intent audience and what you should think about when making these audiences. So within the Google dashboard of your Google Ads account, you wanna click on Tools and Settings, you wanna click on Audience Manager, and you're gonna go over to Custom Audiences and click on the blue circle with a plus to select custom intent audiences. We're gonna give our audience a name here. Let's see, uh, name goes here, name it whatever you want. Uh, and you, you're gonna select in market keywords. So let's just choose a niche here. I'm gonna select, uh, let's see, I'm gonna select mechanic. So let's just type in mechanic here. This would be people who maybe own a mechanic shop or looking for mechanics. And it's gonna give you ideas for what it thinks you're looking for. So auto mechanic near me, auto repair. We're just gonna start to add all of these uh, people in the audience. And let's just see cheap car repair places near me. That's a good one. That's what people are searching for. So let's go ahead and plug that in. Cheap repair, motor car repair. Let's just add these in here. Now, of course, you want to skim this list to make sure that it's ideal for you. Uh, some of them might not be in there, so let's see here. We got any here that don't fit. Now, I can click on audience size, and if I start to enter in my, uh, you know, my location as being the United States only, and I want to specify that it's also an English-speaking person that we're wanting to target, I select video and reload. It's going to show me the amount of people or the impressions that are in that estimated size of people. I can see the demographics, the age, the gender, the parental status. 
really powerful stuff. Now this list is very, very short, and we're gonna talk about how many should actually be in here, but I'm actually going to think about, let's add some more here. So let's type in something that might be related to this, or it allows us to get more ideas. Let's do transmission repair. Another thing that people might be searching for. If you ever had transmission issues, you probably know. So it gives me more ideas, and I again, more things that I can add that aren't already in my list. I'm just going to add all of these in here. Let's see. Best car repair shops, Japanese car. That's great. Uh, that gives me another idea. Let's do another one here. Let's think about, uh, see, they had one for J Japanese. Let's do domestic uh, auto repair. And let's get some more ideas. You can see how this works. So you start. To, you need to really do some um, investigating. Really think about your niche and what your ideal customer is shopping for, and use Google to give you more ideas. Car mechanics near me. There's a lot of them that are near me. A lot that are near me. So people are looking for local mechanics. And I can see here if there's any more. Great auto mechanic near me. Motor car repair near me. Let's see here. Let's try. Let's try another one here, just to kind of fill up our list a little bit more. Let's do service mechanics near me, and hit enter, and get even more ideas. And this will probably be the last one that we choose, and then we'll we'll get our audience size here and see if it helps us out a little bit. So car repairs near me, great. These are all really strong keywords. If you are running an auto body shop or a mechanic shop. This is a great way to get your ad in front of people uh, specifically near you. This would be great for a, a local uh, local B2C marketing. And look, we have a pretty full list there. Uh, I actually would recommend more, but for the sake of it, we're just going to leave it here. We'll talk about that. Let's go to audience size and just see where we're at. Um, yeah, we have a lot here, a lot of people. Now you'll think, okay, well, I'm in Sandusky, Ohio, Nick. Uh, is this really what I need to do? Yes, uh, this is especially what you need to do. Uh, of course, these are, are national numbers, but it's safe to say that there are people in Sandusky, Ohio, who are a part of this 100 to 500 million impressions that you can get your ad in front of. It's important to know, though, about your location, what people are searching for locally. And you can ask your customers, ask people, pull people, and you'll get some really good ideas. But this is how we create the custom intent audience. We would just hit create there down the bottom and we would use this, we would import this into our audience targeting. Now we run a lot of custom intent ads. I do for myself, we do for our clients and they're powerful, they're great. But here's something you actually need to be mindful of and really pay attention to is your metrics. You're gonna notice that everything is gonna be more expensive on your metrics, the cost per click, meaning the, you know, how much money you have to spend before someone clicks on your ad can be higher. The cost per lead can be higher because again, you are so hyper-focused on people that you're gonna get a lot of people that don't click through or don't become leads. But here's where you should also pay attention is if you do this right, your cost per acquisition, meaning your cost per sale is gonna be lower because you're getting in front of a more refined, more interested, someone with higher levels of intent, you're getting in front of them. So you're, you're not spending money and you're not, you're not getting people interested in offers that don't pertain to them, but you're really going to the heart of the matter and to your ideal prospect or customer. So just be careful and looking at your metrics. Yes, cost per lead, cost per view, cost per everything might be higher and it might take a little bit longer for these audiences, for these ads to roll out, meaning you're not getting a ton of impressions, a ton of views right off the bat because again, there might not be hundreds of thousands or millions of people in your little city that are searching for one of those things. So that's gonna be careful. Also, when you are creating your big bag of custom intent, Google suggests that you need 50 keywords in there or 50 phrases. I'm going to tell you that uh, 50 is fine, you can do that, but really look for as many as you possibly can. If that is 100, 200, 300, if they're all relative, if, if you get that many ideas from using Google, just like Google gave us, and they all are relevant and pertain to what it is that people are searching for, then by all means, put those in there. Use that. Another great thing that I like to do is I like to do different website names. So somebody might not know the website of a competitor. They might not know the website of another product or service somewhere else, 
but they're going to go to Google and they're going to type in the name. So using names of competitors is a good thing to use. Really fill out your list with 100, 200 if you can. I've seen great lists with 500 keywords that perform well, and I've also seen those lists not perform as well as a smaller list of 50. So it really kind of depends. You really have to split test this and see what works for your product, your niche, and you can kind of see what that works. Not every niche has 5,000 keywords. Maybe it only has 50. Just fit in the ones that are relevant to you and to your audience. Custom intent is awesome. It's very powerful. It's very useful. And I recommend this as number five in the YouTube ads that you should run. Really get used to the other types of targeting, which you can find those trainings down in the description below. Watch those videos, get really comfortable and familiar and see what's gonna work for you and your business. Now, if you like this video, do me a huge favor, click on the subscribe button. We're doing our best to give as, as relevant, as, as valuable content as we possibly can when it pertains to YouTube ads. We'd appreciate it if you can hit subscribe, like this video, comment below, let us know how you plan on using custom intent. Let us know if you have ever done custom intent or if this is something that is new to you. We'd love to see how we can possibly help you out. Hit the subscribe button, like the video, comment. We're gonna see you on the next video.